Hey guys, Tara here from Recovering Book Quarter, and today is my wrap up for the month of October. Uh, not my favorite reading month. Um, it was kind of a lot of middle of the road reads. I did have one five star. Um, so the breakdown is one five star, six four star, and 11 three star reads. I did have one DNF, so a grand total of 19 books for this month. So I'm going to go through these in the order that we uh, got them in my game. I'll tell you which category it was for and then let you know what I thought, brief synopsis. And then at the very end, I have two additional books that I had read that were not as a result of my game or wheels. All right. So we first landed on my TBR box for which we pulled Seed to Harvest by Octavia E. Butler. And this is the um, Seed to Harvest trilogy and contains four novels, which include Wild Seed, Mind of My Mind, Clay's Ark, and Pattern Master. So my goal was to read this entire thing. Unfortunately, I only got one of the books done. I was contemplating not continuing with the series, but I would like to give the second book a chance. I wound up giving this one only three stars, which was kind of a disappointment because I loved Kindred. This is my second Octavia Butler book. Um... I would say if you enjoyed the, um, what was it called? Lassiter, which is Lassiter. And then there was like some witches book. It's by Anne Rice and, um, not Lassiter, Lasher. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lassiter's from the Black Dagger Brotherhood. The Lasher book. Um, and then there is like the, witch, some, some witches that was like a duology, I think. Um, and I think if you liked that, you would really like this. It gave me, I kept thinking about Lasher the whole time I was reading this. Very similar. So this is a, I guess, fantasy more along the lines of fantasy. I don't think it's sci-fi. I wouldn't categorize it sci-fi. Um, but there are these two like super magical characters that end up meeting up together. They're able to, one's able to sh shape shift into like to change her body into other anything else she wants it to be and then the the male is able to overtake bodies and have them become his body and then those bodies die once he has no use for them and then they have some other magical powers and things like that too when we start out we are in um times of slavery we come from Africa over to New York City and when it ends um it's it's still back in, in slavery times so um I, I'm interested to see what else happens hopefully the rest get better and this was more like a setting it up for things to come type of book all right then um my five star prediction for this month was Roots by Alex Haley and I wound up giving this four stars only because there were sections of it that I did not love. And I feel like the beginning parts went very long. Then at the end, we kind of got rushed, despite the fact that 600 over 600 pages. Um, I can see why this is like the slavery novel that all other slavery novels are inspired by. Um, I thought I had read some like pretty horrific books in The Yellow Wife and The Underground Railroad. Ooh, that is nothing compared to this one. This one, I was so nervous to read this and rightfully so because it is so graphic. But like, you know that that is likely how it was. I mean, just so bad. Um, but the book itself, I, there was just certain things I didn't care for, and which is why it was a four star versus five star. Um, I do plan on doing a book to mini series to movie adaptation show um, in order to compare the book to the mini series that was done, I think it was in the 80s, and then the, the recent movie remake that they did, because I would just love to see what they did with it. So, five star. All right, then we had The Haunting of Maddie Claire. I had landed on specific author and got Simone St. James. So The Haunting of Maddie Claire is Simone St. James' first book and this wound up being a four star read for me um it reads very differently i feel like than her more recent books do 
And yes, there is a major supernatural aspect to it. It is a ghost story. But there is also a romance that was quite central to this plot as well that I didn't love. Um, but I did enjoy the characters in here. The haunting itself was done, I feel like, really well. And I did get creeped out, gotta be honest. Um, Simone St. James does really manage to creep me out, like, all the time. And I, I really just enjoy her writing. This was my third Simone St. James. And my goal is to read through all of hers. I'm sorry. It was a three-star, not a four-star. I had to just double-check because I'm like... I feel like maybe I did a three star. It was three star. Um, but still, it, it was good. I just did not enjoy it as much as I did um, the Sundown Motel and Broken Girls. All right. Um, I, for my 21 and 2021, got um, Cup of Comfort for Mothers, Stories That Celebrate the Women Who Give Us Everything edited by Colleen Sell, and this was my DNF. I wanted this to be something different than it was, and I did give it a good chance. I read through page 85. Um, I think I was looking for, I was looking for stories by daughters about their mother and their relationship with their mother, and it, this is the opposite. This is like the mother's um, relationship with the daughter from like the mother's perspective and where I'm at in my life with my mother in particular. Yes. Even though I have my daughter, I wanted to read about the, the relationship from the daughter's perspective to the mother's. So it just wasn't, it's, I'm not saying it wasn't good. It just was not what I wanted it to be. And so therefore I, I had like no desire to pick it up. So I DNF'd it. All right, then I landed on a book that was gifted, and for that I picked Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This was gifted to me during Krista's um, most recent book exchange that she held over at her channel on Books and Jams. And I wanted this to be, I think, so much better than it was. Don't get me wrong, it, it was fun in aspect. It, it, it's at a, takes place at a Renaissance festival, and I really love all things like festival, fair, circus, um, like midnight market, that kind of thing. Love, love that type of stuff. But this was just, just, I don't know. Like, I can't say that I loved the relationship between the two main characters. And I, yeah, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't buy into it. And there was a lot of that, like constant misunderstanding. It was a hate to love. And on top of that, like totally constant misunderstanding. And that, that just bothers me. So I do love a good hate to hate to love romance, but the, the misunderstanding thing, I, I don't care for that. So three stars, it was fine, but I thought I would like it so much more than I actually did. All right, then we got the prompt of a book everyone else has read. And for that, I chose 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. And kind of along the same, um, same thing, this was not hate to love, but there was misunderstanding again that bothers me. And I, it was an interest, interesting character choices. Let me just say that. I didn't love the female character. She was so over the top. She's just really over the top. And again, I had a chemistry issue with the two main characters. So, but like I enjoyed the book itself. I guess overall. So it was another three star read. Next up, we got mystery with a person in the title. So for that, I chose finding Jake by Brian Reardon. Obviously the name in the title is Jake. And this wound up being a four star read. I liked this. I guess I didn't have very high in, um, expectations for this one. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, we, when we open up, a father has just discovered that there has been a school shooting and all the parents, he has two kids that are in the school. All the parents are told to go and wait th at this church. He's waiting and slowly kids start coming in one after another until he's the last one left and his kid has not shown up. There's 13 kids dead. Turns out that they suspect him as being one of the shooters in this mass shooting. And we get dual perspectives from the time they find out they're pregnant with Jake until it converges with the current timeline. And 
it was so good. It, it was really, really good. I, I really, I enjoyed it a lot. I'd probably say more like four and a half stars if Goodreads had a half star that we were able to do. All right, then for my In Real Life book club, along with Buzzword for Feeling, I read Hope Harbor by Irene Hannon, and this is the first in her Har Hope Harbor series. And um, this I wound up giving four stars. It's very much like a Hallmark movie, and if you're in the mood for a good Hallmark movie, then this is the book for you. Uh, there was here's the thing. There was a romance in here. And then there was another story told about a, um, a mother and her older son, who's like an adult now, their relationship and like her hope journey and things, or I'm sorry, her faith journey and, and stuff like that. And I loved that storyline. Didn't love the romance storyline as much. And then when it came to the end, I, they fast forwarded too quick past something I really wanted to see happen, which bothers me. Uh, but overall, four stars, and I am going to be continuing with that series. There is a very strong faith aspect. It is not classified as Christian fiction. It is classified as contemporary romance, but there is a really strong faith aspect that's not hokey at all, okay? Christian aspect. All right. Um, then I read, uh, for landing on Buzzword Place, I read The Adventure Zone. So The Adventure Zone would be the place. And this was a graphic novel. It says by Clint McElroy, Griffin McElroy, Justin McElroy, Travis McElroy, and Carrie Peach. And uh, this wound up being three stars. I just, I just don't know the graphic novels are my thing that much. Like, I like things to be described so that I can picture them in my head. And instead, it's just, you know, a lot of dialogue because you actually see the pictures. I don't know. I have one more on my shelf to try. If I don't end up loving that, I'm probably going to kind of give up on graphic novels altogether. Um... But this one is like, it's a Dungeon and Dragon game, which is super fun. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I just think I would have liked it better if it was a book versus a uh, graphic novel. The story itself was good. The Dungeon Master came up with a great story. That part was fun. And there are some, um, you know, adult language in here. But I am going to pass this on to Cassidy because she really loves Dandy. She loves graphic novels. When she saw it, she was like, I totally want to read that. And I'm okay with, with her reading this, even despite that somewhat adult language in here. And she is 12. Um, if anybody is curious. I have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. And this was for my, um, I landed on Instagram poll. And... I, uh, it, this was up against 56 Days by Catherine, I think that's by Catherine Anderson or Catherine Howard, somebody like that. Um, and this one won, and this was my five-star read for the month. And I absolutely love this so much. There were so many twists and turns and I saw none of them coming until the author very clearly wanted me to see what was happening. So this I loved and definitely recommend this. So there is a husband and wife. Um, they win a, a trip to this like very like out of the way, middle of nowhere, kind of like a Airbnb that an old, I think it's an old church that was converted into this Airbnb in the middle of the Scottish, Scottish Highlands. And, it's their anniversary, and every year the wife writes her husband a letter on their anniversary that she does not give to him. But this year, she's going to give him the letter. And the wife, the husband also has face blindness, so he's unable to recognize people by their faces. It's based on other things that he knows who people are. So good. I loved it so, so much. If you want a really good, especially for like this time of year and the winter and stuff, thriller, psychological, go, go pick this up. I loved it. Book of the month steered me right this month. Okay, then I landed on a specific author. I got Michelle Christon for that this time. Uh, State of Fear. I had previously tried this, wasn't loving it. Decided I needed to give it another shot. Glad I did because I um, I did enjoy this one. Um, wound up being a three-star read. In this one, we are looking at the phenomenon of global warming. And does it exist or is it all made up? Um, there's a lawsuit that takes place. We kind of go all over the globe in here and it was fun. Um, as far as Michael Crichton's concerned, usually his stuff's like so scientifically based that I have a harder time with it. This one is not 
yes, there's science in here, but not like that I can't understand. So, um, if you, you know, are into the environment, um, question whether or not global warming is actually happening. Like, I think you would like this book. Then I landed on another specific author, three specific authors this month. Uh, and this one, it was Danielle Steele, one of our great American treasures, I feel like. And I want to read through her entire backlog. Um, got Beecham Hall. And this, if you were a fan of Downton Abbey, <laughs> I think that you will enjoy this book. Uh, this wound up being four stars. There is a romance in here. If you like reality, not reality TV, it, it's just... A show. I mean, it's a show. It's not reality television, but it's like loosely based on the Downton Abbey concept. And this woman and her um, fiance, well, not fiance, I guess they're just boyfriend and girlfriend, but they've been together for like, I don't know, 10 years, something like that. One day she walks in and he is cheating on her with her best friend in her bed. And she decides that she is going to go and stay in England where they're taping the show Beecham Hall. And she goes over, she winds up getting a job on set and just everything that ensues with that. And it was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. I would like to go to Beach Hall. Isn't that so pretty? Yes. So I would recommend that one. Um, not the kind of Danielle Steele I remember. This is one of her newer ones. And it, it was just, I thought it was a lot of fun. I, then I landed on Reread. And for that, I got the Screw Tape Letters Annotated Edition by C.S. Lewis. I have read the Screw Tape Letters previously. Obviously, it's a reread, but I hadn't read the Annotated Edition. So the Screw Tape Letters itself is a five-star read. The Annotated Edition, looking at the annotations and what that includes, was a three-star read. I'd say about 50% of the annotations were unnecessary. I thought that this was going to be more of an analysis to help you better understand the book and and the allegory of it and what um, C.S. Lewis was trying to convey. It's not. It's more like here's things he talks about in the book and here's what those things mean. But there are things such as hopscotch. He actually explains and like gives the definition of hopscotch. I don't I don't need that. I know what hopscotch is. I think most people, even little kids, know what hopscotch is. But in any case, three star. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Just kind of felt flat for me. For the buzzword readathon um, this month, it was elements. And so, you know, earth, water, wind, fire. For that, I chose The Water Dancer by Tenehisi Kut. And this wound up being four stars. I really, really loved it. I just wish I had read it in a different month and I had read Roots because this is another slave story that takes place in very much the same time period. And where I started it, I was at a point in Roots where the stories were just so similar that I was having a hard time keeping them separated in my head. As the, this story goes on, I, I was better able to do that. They separated out. There's a lot of magical realism in this. And the best surprise for me of all, it's not a surprise. I think that it's not like a spoiler surprise, but one of the characters in here is Harriet Tubman, which I thought was so cool. And um, it was just, it, this is like a beautiful, beautiful story. That's uh, so what I'm going to say about it. Truly a beautiful story. So I really, I liked that a lot. And I was not expecting really anything of it. I had heard kind of mixed reviews on it. So the fact that I enjoyed it as much as I did was a really nice surprise. And um, I picked out three books that were for my morning reading, um, which is where I spent, you know, I have coffee with God and I, that's when I pray, read my Bible, do my devotional. And then I like to have some other type of uh, Christian based reading that I do. And so I had picked three books for this month and um, those were uh, Praying the Lord's Prayer for Spiritual Breakthrough by Elmer L. Towns. This was four stars. This was really good. Um, I personally, like, I kind of fell in love with the Lord's Prayer several years ago. My dad was, or is, an elder at our church. And during the, um, the Easter week services, he did a sermon on the Lord's Prayer and how he prays it every day and why he does that. And just how rich the Lord's Prayer is. And so this was right along those same lines. It breaks down the Lord's Prayer and how each line exactly what that means if you are praying it from your heart and your whole heart and then there's also in here like journaling exercises um a, a checklist to, to see how you're doing on things and then some like questions 
and answers like Bible study type of deal also. So I did actually like this one a lot. Then I read Encounters with Jesus, Unexpected Answers to Life's Biggest Questions by Timothy Keller. Not what I thought it was going to be, which is why I gave it three stars instead of four stars. I feel like this, this title is deceptive. Encounters with Jesus. I thought that that was going to be like people have, the encounters people have had now where they've encountered Jesus in their day-to-day -day life. Not what it is at all. This is like encounters from the Bible when people had encountered Jesus and what it meant in the Bible. I so it just wasn't what I had wanted. I feel like, yeah, it just didn't do it for me. But it's, I mean, still, it was three stars. It was fine. And then um, Teaching for an Unbelieving World by John Paul II. Um, he wrote this when he was Archbishop Carl Wajila, Wajila, I think. Ooh, hard. It's a Polish name. But um, this is his um, reflections on Paul's sermon at the Oropagus. And... It's like a bunch of catechisms, essentially, uh, about that. And um, it wound up being three stars. It was good. Again, it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Uh, it was, at times, it seemed kind of disjointed. But overall, like, I really loved um, Pope John Paul II. And it was just kind of nice to read his writings again. All right, then my two additional books. Um my i read one of my booktube spin books i'll read the other one in december so the first one i read is suspicious minds this is a stranger things novel by gwenda bond this is the first one in the stranger things novels and in this we get terry's backstory who was Elle's mother and there's a really good cast of characters in here uh i wound up giving it three stars but i really think it should i would have preferred a three and a half star again though that's not a thing so technically i'd say this was like three and a half stars um, and you get some, like, one of the people has some, um, seeing in the future kind of abilities and we get to see her like fast forwarding to L and stuff like that. And, um, I liked it better than I thought I would. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to read the second one or not. I have previously DNF'd it and given it away. So if I do end up reading it, it will only be if I can find it to borrow, um, on audio through my library. And then my last one for the month and... So I guess I can say I officially participated in Victober because I did read a um, Victorian a Victorian Gothic novel, and that was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And uh, this wound up being three stars for me. Um, I, you know, I thought it was going to be spooky. I thought that it was going to be scary. I thought there was a good, it, there was none of those things in there. It was just kind of. I mean, I get romantic suspense. There was a romance that was through the whole thing, but it just didn't do what I thought. It wasn't what I thought it was. Still, I mean, there was some great, I mean, the atmosphere in here is great. There was some good quotes. Um, so yeah, three stars. It was fine. I will never read it again, but I would like to watch the movie, see how that is. So maybe I'll do a, um, movie, you know, book to movie adaptation for that to watch the newest one. We'll see. We'll see. It won't happen for a while. Um, so that was my wrap up for the month. Did, have you guys ever read any of these? I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm totally off my rocker? Do you think I'm crazy? Are there any of these that you would like to read now that you've heard me talk about them? Let me know down in the comments. I love to interact with everybody. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to hit that subscription button. If you would, if you enjoyed this, you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you would like to connect with me other places, everywhere I can found on the interwebs is down below in the description box. All right, guys, don't forget, I also have floss tube and color tube content. I just uh, put up a new release schedule under the community if you want to check that out so you know when I'll be releasing what type of content. You can do that. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!